Woo child. Yeah, buddy. Yeah. So, so, so here we are once again, me and my man, yes. Chris Flo, on Men yes. Talk About. Who you with? Yes. Yes. I'm, I'm putting the headphones for this one because like we going in. Yes. I got I got the special glass for you today, man. This this glasses will come out often, but you know, you got the special glass. So to oh, you, brother. Blessings. I'll take that. And once I pour this vino, I'll be there with you. We'll do another cheers. So welcome, yes, Chris. And welcome to everybody that's tuning in to the Men Talk About podcast. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being here. I'm grateful for you. And as we always do, um, we got my we we have men. This is a con- this is a podcast for men and the masculine energy. Uh, we have this is an interview by me, a man, and we interview men so that other men can get education that maybe they have yet to get, get development that they have yet to get, and also listen. The life that we want to live requires work, and that's inner work. That's the deep work. That's 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 more than the bullshit woo woo stuff that's out here. This is about getting real. And uh, I'm I'm in awe of this man that we have here today, um, because last time Chris you were on we talked about the work life balance man that junk was on point, yes, got a lot of positive yes, feedback. And this yes, time Chris is coming on, and he got a new addition. Well, actually you got three you got two new additions because you had Carter before. Now you got Logan and you got a book called Build Your Legacy. So, um, before we get into it, oh. yes, yeah, buddy, yes. yo, yes. Yes. love it, man. And listen, before we get into it, Thank I want to give everybody a rundown of, of you, Chris, because um, there may be some people that yes. listen to this podcast that have yet to hear the work-life balance. And if that's you listening, listen, go back and check that after you hear this podcast. So, Chris, um, to give you a rundown about Chris Flores, uh, Chris has been a personal trainer since 16. Uh, also, I have a head athletic trainer for a high school in, in Union in Union County, New Jersey. Um, he also is an entrepreneur. He has his own yoga studio. He's got, he's got a mood and a flow called Flow Fitness. So he's got his own studio. Um, he's got a concept and a program called Flowosophy, which based on the book that there's going to be some things that we're going to dive in on that. And he's also an entrepreneur of an ATC uh, uh, development and actually continuing education uh, company called Rooted Rehab. Um, he's also a master instructor with uh, something that I think is one of the coolest freaking movements on the planet is animal flow. And uh, listen, he's a creator. He's an entrepreneur. He's a freaking tip top dude. He's a king. And he's also one of the dudes that he's the dude that um, created the uh, men mentoring men. He brought us all together um, and I love what, oh man, see, I'm trying, I'm getting ahead of myself. See, for people listening, I'm letting you know right now, I read the book today mm-hmm. um, and I, I'm already trying to get ahead of myself. So I'm going to do my best to not do that. Um, but, but Chris really, man, Chris is, is, Chris is a guy for people that are in the um, athletic uh, industry and also personal training. If you have yet to follow this man, I would follow him because he's given tips more than the physical He's giving tips on how to better yourself. Yes, in the body, but also in the mind and spirit. So Chris, welcome, welcome, welcome to this podcast, man. I- I'm blessed to have you. And is there anything else you would like the people to know before we dive in? Not really. I mean, you, you covered a lot, if not more than I guess they needed to know. So <laughs> I think that was a, a pretty thorough intro. I appreciate that, man. Bless up, bless up, man. And, and you know, the, Chris, one of the reasons I wanted to do that is I think, like, after going through the book, I think that how you wrote the book out, you cover each of those different things, man. Yeah. Um, and sure. I really appreciate that. And the reason why I bring that up is because, you know, for as a man, I, I one of my concepts or one of my perceptions of a man is that we got to do it all. And... Hmm. Um, and also be free of getting support. And this is one of the things I really, why, why I had that intro is because I, I appreciate what you've done as far as how much you've done and also what you created with philosophy, which, which, which we're gonna to talk to in a moment, because I think mm-hmm. that's something that's really gonna be helpful for men. So, so Chris, um, to tap in for a moment, I know we've, we've talked full fitness. I wanna really focus on the book and philosophy. So, um, 
I know the background of the book, uh, but you have you you just released a book called uh, "Build Your Legacy." Uh, can you give uh, the the listeners and the viewers uh, a, a rundown of how this book even came about, man? Yeah, man. Uh, again, thank you for having me on here, man. I'm blessed to be a part of your journey and your life and things that you've gone through. So, uh, definitely excited for you and everything you got going on. Uh, awesome. As far as the book, how it got started was. I like everything else, an idea, right? They say everything happens twice, first in, in the mind and then in, in reality is manifested. And so the idea of the book came about when uh, my girl was pregnant with my first son, uh, Carter. And just the stories my, my father had told me, things my mom had told me, interactions with my grandparents and some of this, the wisdom and things they even instilled in me and kept saying, I wanted him to have something where he can see that. Like I heard my dad tell stories again, my mom said stories, but there was nowhere I can read it for myself. And there's mm. something magical about when you have something on pen and paper and you can actually read it, where mm. you almost interpret it through your eyes. Like when you hear someone say it, it has impact. It has its own, its own kind of world and, and its own beast. Right. But when you actually read it, you interpret it differently. And you know, you never read the same book twice. And so as you go back and look at it again, it's gonna mean something else in 10 years will mean something else to you in 20 years will mean something else the words don't change you change right? right so i wanted something where they can look at it or at the time my one son would be able to read it and say oh this is what we stand for this is the kind of person that my family it wants me to be and so the initial idea and it's funny because uh, jonathan who's in our men's group was there when i first like basically it was a sketch it was like here's the idea i have and it was a couple principles and then as I met with my family and talked to my girl and her family, we added more and more. And, and what you have now is the 18 we've all come up with. Um, yes. But yeah, man. How many did you have to be, how many did you have to start off with before you really, before, like once you, before you went and really gathered more data, how many principles did it start off with? I honestly don't remember. Um, I want to say anywhere from like eight, five to eight, something like that. It wasn't, it wasn't many and, and intentionally because I wanted, I didn't want to fill all the space myself. It was like, obviously it's not my, just my child, right? And, and right. I want my parents to have input. I want her parents to have input. My grandma at the time, I asked her questions. Mm. So I wanted it to be everyone's input because obviously they say it takes a village, right? So it's right. not just my son, it's our son. And when I mean our, not just me and his mother, the people that surround him. And right. so I want everyone to have some kind of input so that, when he interacts with everyone, he knows how to behave. I gotta tell you, man, like at, at the more I'm hearing about this and um, I read this in the book, what you said, like I didn't, I, I, this was the first time I recognized or I, I knew that you had consulted with um, your girlfriend's family as well and really dove into like really the village. And I really appreciate what you're saying because I think that it's, uh, for men, especially raising sons, I think uh, in in our in indigenous populations, that how, what you did is really a modern day of the wisdom transfer of tribes, mm -hmm. because you know I think in our culture right now the elderly and like parents maybe get pushed off to the side or maybe uh, uh, couples will say I'm going to raise my kid my way, and I really appreciate what you did. And I'm curious, man, like, so when you asked your parents and then um, your, your partner's parents, like, hey, like, ask them these questions, what was their reaction when you were gathering this data, man? So for my parents, the only ones that it was very formal for was my parents. Yeah. Everyone else was kind of like, I would just in conversation be like, so what would you want, like, you know, the kid to represent? Like, it was kind of me, like, giving them an interview without them knowing why I was asking those questions because I wanted all kinds of answers. You know, right. I didn't want the answer to be like, oh, well, well, and like this formal thing. I wanted to hear what they would say in normal conversation and right. I could jot that down. So for them, it was more just me questioning stuff. Um, yeah. But for my parents, I actually sat down with index cards and I asked just a bunch of questions. And at first it was kind of like, you know, my dad likes to like to be the funny one. Um, so he was kind of like smiling about it. But my mom, like her face was like, yeah, like she can tell by my look and my, me and my mom had that connection. She yeah, could, she's intuitive, man. She's really intuitive. No, she's like, no, he's not playing. Like, she was serious about it and, like, really gave it thought. 
Um, right. that was my brother, you know, my brother's on board and Nicole was there that night. She was on board too, but we had already, me and Nicole already discussed, not necessarily that interaction, but we had discussed obviously the kid and how we want him to be. Yeah. And some of the rules we want him to live by. And so they were, they were cool with him, man. And like, and like I mentioned in the book, it opened up other conversations with them because there's things sometimes your parents don't tell you because either they don't feel like you don't want to hear it or there's conversations we don't have with family because it's kind of an right. awkward, like, how do you bring it up? Because it is awkward. Like you're in the middle of having dinner and they're like, hey guys, I got an idea. I want to do this thing. And like that first five minutes is extremely awkward. Yeah, and I going with this. But then once the, the flow starts going, you get that flywheel going, then it's just like, everyone starts, yeah, 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 this, 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 and ideas just start flowing in. Um, right. but, wow. but as a, you know, if anybody out there is listening, wants to do it with their family, you got to take that first step and be like, Hey guys, this is the conversation I want to have now. And right. you have to be solid in that and not be like, eh, like, you know, playing double Dutch. I kind of want to talk about it. I don't like, no, I want to have this conversation now. See that now yeah. it's not going to happen. And right. so I think it's important, you know, man, women, whoever, if you want to have those conversations, you got to put your foot down and say, this is a moment we're going to have it. I dig what you're saying there, man, because, you know, I, I appreciate, I, I, one of the things, many things I appreciate about this whole, what you did there is really going in with the intention. And you talk about that in the book, right? And I love what you and Nicole did, even when you first brought this concept up in the men's group, I was like, yo, that's pretty fresh. Because, you know, one of the things is, and I got two sons too, and I, and you know, like with what you've done, this has motivated me to write a book. And because it's one of the reasons why I do videos, right? Because like, I'm like, okay, my son, may, my sons may see this one day. And I appreciate what you did because I, I, I think for men, and I'm making a judgment here. So I, and I acknowledge this. I think for men, there's like this thing of like, okay, we're here and then we're gone. Right. Which is like what I appreciate about what you put do in the book, build your legacy because there's so many pieces in this that I want, I want everyone, like really, I want everyone to read this book. I think for men, I think it's very important to read this book because um, it, whether you have sons or daughters, listen, we're human, we're not gonna be here forever, right? And I think it's so cool. I mean, my dad's gone and my mom's gone. I wish they had done something like this yes. because I would read this junk. I would read this every year, man, because I'd be a change. I'd listen, every year would be different. So, okay, so now I want to I want to dive into the book because there's so here's to it. Yeah, it's the longest, shortest book in history. It is, <laughs> dude. It is. Yo, listen, listen. Oh my gosh. So I'm sitting. So so people listening, and then those whoever who's gonna see this in video. I was I'm I'm sitting reading this, and like I'll tell you the, the exact one. Um. Uh, oh wait, wait, wait! It was uh, yeah, definition versus destination. Wow, man! That one, a lot of people have been saying that hit them. Wow. Bro, yeah. I had to, I had to read. I, I didn't have to. I chose to read that over again because that one, that one hit the mark. And and when when for those that are that are gonna that are purchasing this book, as you're waiting for it, have your have a pen, have a highlighter, get cozy. And and really prepare to like think about this because I think what you did was I think what you did is you gave the concept and then you you provided a story which I I personally think makes it relatable and then you wrap it up right like here's here okay so now that you got all that here's what this is and one of the things I also want to highlight before we really dive in is I. I well, actually, I want to ask you, most of the books that I read, it's like, do this. Here are the steps. Mm -hmm. Blah, 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 blah. And you do something different with your book. I, I, I'd like you to share what the, 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 the premise behind what you did, man. Well, it's, again, like I said, it's the longest, shortest book ever. And, and part of it, it's in short, it, the book itself is actually very short. Right. And that's intentional because people's attention span now is so short. True. So no one's going to read this long novel of me preaching about my family, right? I have for each one of those principles, I can tell you 10 to 15 stories and I'll, I'll freaking hammer the, the, the principle home to you till you walk away saying, 
I have to live by this guy's rules right. versus what I wanted to be more of a conversational piece. Like, here's how I live my life. Why don't you come up with something similar in your life? And, and so that's the book is more of a conversational piece where it's like, you know, like you've been to my house, we play those conversation games where you ask a question, yeah. one gets the, you know, gets the input. So that's yeah. what I want the book to be like, because that opens up space. And that's why we say the book allows space. It's not me hitting you over the head. And I'm a huge fan of Malcolm Gladwell, but like in his books, it's a, a point and then like 10 stories to back up that point. And right. it keeps going right. on in that direction. Mine's is a, a point or a principle one story about me and then you do what you want with it and, right. and you know what i what i got from the story but it leaves space for you to decide what that means to you right. and then go well that was cool but i would probably think about it this way and then again it's not me telling you you have to do it my way it's me saying here's things that you can enjoy here's a principle i'm living my life through and through right. my story i want you to find your story i want to be a conduit to you to to do develop your own principles and so that's why the chapters are written like that and they're short it's it's a quick boom because people don't need they don't need to be preached to we're bombarded with information all day social media and everything else the media is trying to tell us how to live what we should be doing all this stuff and it's like bro here's what i'm doing and go now go do you and that's really how the book is 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 written and developed so it is kind of again very short but it's to give you i'm in and i'm out you know, I don't yeah. need to, to beat you over the head with how you're supposed to, because I don't know what your story is. I don't know your story. I don't know your life. I don't know your situation. Nothing. It's like, here's just some great ideas and sparks thought. And so by leaving room for thought, it leaves room for personal growth. And so mm-hmm. if you want to have a quote unquote self-help book, self-help book, not yelling at somebody for, and saying everything they do is wrong. A self-help right. book is, here's some ideas. Here's a, a guide. Now you go. Right. And that's right. why, again, with the cover, it has that blue on it, right? Like a blueprint, because it's right. a blueprint. Now you go build. Here's right. just here's the kind of the drawings. Now you go figure it out from here. Yeah, I, I gotta tell you, I'm really appreciating this concept of the blueprint uh, because you know, it's like I, I I just did this uh, this workshop on that, the blueprint of a brother. We got something coming next year, and I think that concept is really important. I love what you did with this man because. I think it's, you know, I'm a big Napoleon Hill fan, you know, right? And he talks about the concept. He's like, we don't think. Mm. Like, if you want to get something in the world, you think. And Like, even you talk about intention in the book. And I really appreciate what you did. And, and you brought something like that. I, this is the first time I'm recognizing it. Like, with the stories, the, the books that give you a ton of stories, I get lost in that shit. And then I start thinking, like, oh, okay. And I, start, I personally, I beat myself up because I'm like, damn, man, like, how am I going to figure out this? And then I end up not, and then I end up failing to integrate the concepts that I read in the book, which are valuable. Right. So th- the thing that I, I, I appreciate with, with what you did here is that you give people the opportunity to really create and build their own less, their own, their own legacy. Now I got a quick question before we go further. Dude, if you got, if you had, cause I know you got stories for these different concepts. How did you pick one for the book for each of the principles? I was just, that's just all intuition. Like there was no okay. rhyme reason to that. That was literally Got like, you. this one sounds cool. Like, and, and some of them were like the definition versus destination. And when you talk about that was a scary one for me to write out because it was like, this could get me in a doghouse, you know, Yo, I, bruh. I, I had to have Nicole read it and give me the okay before putting that content out. But, but I felt, and, and we'll probably talk about this at some point, but I felt, especially with that one and with the intention one, when I talked about the N word and the intention one, yeah those were real and it was very uncomfortable to not only write the, but especially now like it's uncomfortable to put this stuff out because it's a huge part of me like i'm literally giving you a piece of me and saying here's all of me right here in this one little thing like this yeah, is yeah. real stuff this is not me writing a story about fitness and how to train people it's not an external thing this is all from within and i'm right. putting it on a platter and being like yo go ahead beat the crap out of me like i don't know if it's going to be taken well i mean so so far i'm pretty much done with it as far as the book's concerned meaning right i got the feedback from the people that matter the most like yourself like the dudes and the men in the group my family my kids my girl so like everyone else's opinion is completely irrelevant to me like and that's why one of the principles in the book is their comfort is none of your concern so everyone's comfort at from this point on it's none of my concern it's like yo, the people who matter gave me the thumbs up and, and the okay so now from now here on end it's like 
I'm toasting to this job. <laughs> yeah, you're like, yo, I finished it, baby. Yeah, but, dope. dude, I gotta tell you, man, because like, so, so people listen. I was hanging, we were hanging out the other night uh, for our men mentoring men group. And you said several times, you're like, yo, listen, man, I just make sure, like, you know, Nicole read through the book. You know, you had some some people you trust read through it. And after I read um, that uh, definition versus destin- and destination par- chapter, I was like, oh, oh, okay, I get it. Because listen, some of the stuff that I read, like, I've known you for over 10 years, and I'm like, oh, shit. Like, bro, I didn't, like, for, for example, I had no idea when you were working at the high school, you were working all the other gigs, like how you were, bro. Yeah. I was like, yo, I was like, yo, my man's Jamaican. Oh, uh, because you got six jobs, yo, man. Yo, six job, man. Nah, God. So I was like, oh my goodness. And I and I think it's it's for me anyway, I appreciated that, man. Because and I think for people that know you and see the amount of output and content you put out there and a service that you bring to others, I think it's huge for them to see that part of it, uh, of, of vulnerability. And what I also thought was, it, I also think is that it's really powerful to have those kinds of examples. It's, for me as a man, I was like, yo, yo, because that's where it hit me. I was like, yo, let me read this again. So, okay. So the question that's been on my mind, and I'm going to put it out there before I forget. Um, in your book, you you tell the reader it's it's free of going in chronological order right? right you can pick and choose whichever chapter you'd like so i'm going to ask a question here yeah. so for men what would you recommend is the first chapter they read and what would be the first chapter you'd recommend for women to read Wow, that's a, I I didn't even think about that question. Hmm. Then, man, that's why I do what I do, baby. Who you with? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I would say honestly, um, I think for men and for women, that's a great one. So for men, I would say I'm looking at the chapters now. But hmm, which one for men and for women? Um, but off the top of my head, what what resonates with me when you ask that question is first of all for men. Let me let me take my hoodie off this question. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, get so, hot here. Get hot oh. here. No, so for men, it would definitely be um, focused on the process and let the results take care of themselves. And the reason okay. why is a lot of men are very outcome based. It's like I have to win now. I, this has to happen at this moment. I need to make a million dollars. I need to get the bag. I need to do all this stuff, right? Right. So I feel like men are very outcome driven, and so they lose the process in the, in in the way. And, and part of that is why it's so important for men is like they're I'm making money for my family I'm doing this for my family like you say all this stuff for the family but at the end of the day it's like bro you're not with them you're not giving them the time so you're so concerned with the outcome that you have to make x amount of money that uh, the process of it is taking you completely away from the thing that you're trying to protect and save mm. so I feel like men need to focus more on the process okay that money looks good but the process of making it means I'm gone 15 hours a day well, right. let's let's have this conversation with my partner or whatever, and maybe we downsize or downgrade so I can work less hours so I can actually be home to raise our children. Right. Or I don't want this to make this book only about children. If you're a man going out and you and you're working crazy amount of hours and you're so res, you're so focused on the end result, meaning making a ton of money to floss to do whatever to get these chicks, and then you're mad that like. Oh, I can't settle down. I can't do this. Well, look at the, you have no time for anyone. Even right. if the most beautiful, most amazing person in your life came in, you wouldn't have space for them because you're, you're so cluttered. So right. for men, it would be that process chapter, focus on the process. Yeah. For women, I would say the chapter that, I, that speaks the most to me for women is their comfort is none of your concern. Mm. Um, the reason why I say that one is because women by nature tend to be more nurturers and more timid just because they want people to accept them and they tend to do a lot of things with that like I don't want to overstep this boundary I don't want to well I say stereotypically right and and also women from the past more so than women now women now are more like I'm women hear me raw this is going in I'm going in 
Yeah. And I appreciate that. And it's funny, and we this could be a whole separate conversation, but younger men now have a hard time with really strong women. You want a woman who's, who's I'm here, hear me raw. You want that, but you're intimidated by her at the same time. Right. So I feel like that that chapter of if their comfort is none of your concern is very important for women because they got to know like, yo, however you feel about my success is none. That's not my business. Like I need to continue right. doing the thing that is going to cater to my life and my success and what I want to do. And you right. could be a part of that if you choose. But if you're uncomfortable with the fact that I make twice as much as you, that's not my concern. I'm not going to I'm not going to diminish my light so you can shine like, no, nah, man, I'm going to keep shining. You can come with me. Why don't you get right. some, some some sunblock and jo- join in the sun rays, man, like, and have fun with me. And I think right. a lot of men need to start realizing that for women, if they're making more than you, if they're doing this, if they choose, uh, it's a very important word, if they choose to have you in their life, right? then they're choosing you for a reason. And exactly. if you're making $10 an hour and they still choose you, bro, bless up and, and, be, and, and enjoy the, the fact that she wants you in her life. Um, because too many men think they have to be the breadwinner, they have to do all this stuff, and it's not the case no more, man. So those chapters, I think, for those two demographics would be great. I dig that. I dig what you're saying, bro. This, this, so, so for people listening, this, this is um, one pause for a moment. For us. For people listen. This is a normal conversation. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Pretty much. Yes, it is. It is. That's how. No, this is this is how we do. This is what this is what it's like in our men mentoring men groups. We have these real conversations. You know, sometimes we'll talk about sports, but then it comes right back to the real, the real, real stuff. Um, and, and that's what it is, man. Uh, so one of the things, Chris, I wanted to, I, I wanted to highlight too um, for men, because you talked about uh, the focus on the process. One of the things that I re- really resonated with me is like this, this is something that actually I experienced recently, man, um, like within the past several weeks. Like I was so focused on the outcome that I was cranky and I lost the process, mm. right? And I found it's like, listen, it was like, I had to keep bringing myself to, okay, stick to the plan, stick to the plan. Like for people that I work with and like, I, I have like in my days, it's not the philosophy sheet, but I have like a sheet every morning. I wake up like, okay, this is what's gotta get done today. And like for also for those that are listening, like tap into Chris Flores because he's got, if you have problems planning, he's got a flow as philosophy daily planner. It's a great way to get started. Actually, a lot of stuff that I do was based off of when I when I was working with Chris with the daily planner. So with the focus on the process, we talked about money. One of the things that that resonated with me when you were when I was reading that is uh, I expect and also re re uh, came up for me again when you were talking about it, is like I, I fell into that with being of service, right? Like when you talked about like, okay, I'm working and I never see my family. Like I'm, I'm working for my family. Like I found like, you know, when I first got involved with the Mankind Project, I was like, yeah, a service. I'm gonna make the world a better place for my kids. And then I was like, I was doing weekends and missing my time with E. And then I had to take a step back, Chris. And I was like, hold up, man. Like, how is this really okay, I'm saying it in words. So I appreciate what you're saying, uh, the focus on the process for men, because I think there is, for the work I've done with men over the past several years, I think there is this piece that's like, I gotta be this. I gotta be this. I have to be like, I, I'm getting the image of like that, the man like in with the cape and then there's a woman at his lower leg, like, save me. Mm-hmm. I'm like, that shit is some old. Now it's like a man in a cape and a woman right here with a with a cape too. Like, yo, who you with, mm-hmm. right? And I appreciate. Um, and I think it's interesting because you, we talk to men and women, but this is also like the masculine feminine properties, right? The masculine is like the arrow, the boundaries, and then the feminine is the creativity. And when it's coming to the feminine and the women, their comfort is none of their none of your concern. Listen, I think this is huge for for women and for men too, because like for me, this resonated too, because you know me for a long time. I've been a people pleaser, man. I'm in recovery right now. Right. It's working out well. <laughs> so, but for real, like that's a big thing because for people listening and watching this, when we, when a person fails 
to really tap into themselves and combine these two, Chris, focus on the process and be free of concern of what other people are going to think. When we do that, we settle into our purpose and into, and into radiance and into bliss, contentment. Um, and when we, when, we, when we keep like thinking about, oh, I wonder what this person is going to say, it's a path for, it's a path for freaking chaos, depression, well, anxiety. I think, I think that's why it's, it's so important. And you and Lamar touched upon it when you guys did the podcast before. So you guys should definitely check that one out with Mars Basketball. When you're talking about a brand, the entry point is so low now. And, and why that's so important is that the artist can be the artist. And so when I give you this content, this has literally been edited by two friends, like people who know me. It hasn't been edited by someone from New York Times, and it hasn't been published by some publishing company that's going to water it down and say, well, the public doesn't want to hear that. You got to take this out, omit this because that means this and blah, blah, blah. It hasn't been looked at by any of those, scrutinized by any of those higher bodies or whatever you would think, right? So what you're getting is source. And why that's so important is because the source is the source of creativity, the source of whatever. We are source for ourselves. Sure. And so when each person can tap into source and deliver source, then you're getting authenticity, you're getting integrity. Once that gets watered down by corporations or whoever, let's say you have a publisher, let's say you have an editor that doesn't know you, some person sitting in a, in a room saying, nah, it, shouldn't, it should read this way because this is po politically correct or this is better grammatically. When you have all those people water your stuff down, then all of a sudden you lose your voice. So it goes from building your legacy to build a legacy by blah, blah, blah. And it, it has too many stamps on it. And it's like, no, nah, if you want to know the truth, if you want to know the real, you got it. Like back in the day, right? You want the good hip hop. You had digging the crates and you had to look for it. Yo, where, where, who's the, who's the nicest in the block right now? Oh, you found the source and you found something. Yeah. Now we're coming back to that because we have such a low entry point. So I was able to put this on Amazon. Like, Yo, think about 15 years ago, you would have to find a store that would that would have a publisher that would put your content out. Now yeah. I'm bypassing the store, I'm bypassing the distributor, I'm bypassing all that and giving you my exact words directly to the consumer. So I'm speaking mm. directly to you. And and this is, again, I, you know, I always have Jay-Z lines for stuff, but like there's a song, there's a verse he said one time, my art remains like a dart from the speaker to your heart, spiritually through a portal, now my words are immortal. And it's like, yo, this is directly from me to you. And so when people read it, you're not getting 15 people in between. You're getting right. directly, like, this is my art right to you, from my heart to yeah. yours, reading it, whatever, right? And this so I think, yeah, and that's, I think that's the important part of it all. So right. given that, again, source is so important and we're losing that. Everyone wants to please everyone else and, and do all these things. And I know there's going to be people who hate this, and that's why. It's so important that chapter I have about your family always be your family and you can have friends that become family. So like I consider Paul family, man. Like, and so those people kind of guard my stuff. And so it's like anyone else that has to go through that shield. And it's like, yo, I got, I got my close knit family, my, my crew. It's like, all right, you can talk ish if you want, but it doesn't really matter to me because these people, they, they see me as valuable. So you can try to diminish my value all you want, but it doesn't matter because the people that matter most see me as valuable. And so I think that's very important that people start tapping into that, understanding that, that like, yo, your source is so valuable. Like right. you have so many, your ideas, everything you have is so incredible. Right. Just let it go sometimes. Like stop being worried about who's going to do this, and especially for women, like who's going to say this and they're going to think I'm this and they're going to say that. Like, nah, man, just put it out. Right. Do it. I think I think, you know, this applies. I, I'm I'm this is resonating with me about social media too, right? Because I find for myself personally, like there's some things like, yo, I want to put that on social media that I'm like, ah, I don't know. Hmm. I don't know. And then I end up put then I end up putting it out anyway. And I'm like, oh, I'm glad I did this shit. I'm like, all right, cool. You know what? Oh, man. And I, I it's interesting, man, because like, oh man, this is where I I you know. To be transparent, before I got on this podcast, I was telling Chris, I was like, yo, I wanted to have like three or four principles I wanted to dive into. And I got like 11, <laughs> 11 out of 18. I'm like, yo, I want to go to this and this and this. And I appreciate what you're saying because 
it's coming back to me in a couple different things like layers right so like with what you're saying i'm hearing the power of intention mm-hmm. um in like the principle for uh 11 because i took notes living up for yourself outside of the comfort zone right i forget how you had it labeled um was that was that what it was hold on i got the book right here yeah let's I'm see going what was 11? Oh, no, 11 was... Con- yeah, yeah. So I had a notes like living for self outside the comfort zone. Like, I think this is huge right now, man, because... And I well, just thought... Especially- on, before you dive into it, so the thing yeah. too, that people need to understand, it's not living outside your comfort zone. Right. It's their comfort is none of your concern. And that's important because everyone pushes, live outside your comfort zone. You got to this. Nah, you got to be you. Yes. They have to adjust. Right. And I think that's the, the comfort zone thing, because everyone thinks that like, all right, well, media wants this the society wants this. So I'm going to jump right. outside my comfort zone. No, be you. you. I'm comfortable in this skin and y'all have to adjust to me. Yes. And that's, you know, that's that whole thermostat versus thermometer thing. Like I, I changed the, the temperature of the room when I walk in. Right. You may adapt to their temperature. That's cool. You can read the temperature. That's great. I'm walking in like, yo, this is, I'm going to be me regardless of what y'all think. And right. if you don't like me, that's fine. That's okay. Like we need that. We need to have this the, the the dichotomy. We need the other side of the coin. You know, and that's why if you when you start the book, I don't know if you have it in yours, but the book starts off with a poem. And one of the things of the poem is it show it's be able to understand both sides of the coin, show dexterity. And so my kids understand that you need to have both sides. Like yeah. it's not just I'm confident. Look at me. It's like that person's confident too. I can recognize someone who is completely opposed to me. I can recognize when people don't respect them. Like, all right, I see you. Like, you know, I know you. Right. Have, you hate me. That's cool. You know what I mean? Like, I, I'm comfortable with that. As long as I know where I stand with you, I'm fine. As long as you don't disrespect me, now that's a whole different situation. Right. As long as we can dis disagree and agree right. to disagree, that's fine. If you're gonna force your ideals and opinions upon me, now we're gonna have some issue. It's a problem. Well, I and I'm so thank you so much for that distinction because that was something that really resonated with me. Because again, coming back to the traditional self help books, Chris, it's just like you know, get out of your comfort zone. You need to do this, and it's like, okay, like all right, great. Um, now what? And it's the thing is, is like well, as you say, the comfort zone is outside of yourself. And I think it's, and, and especially when it comes to building legacy, I want to make sure that the, the that, because men and women are most likely going to be listening to this. So I want to make sure whoever's listening and sees this, listen, this is the, this, it, it, this is to me, one of the biggest parts of building, of building legacy. It's really being comfortable and authentic in who I am, who you are, because now, listen, somebody else is taken mm. right someone else is taken so if i'm coming in and i'm staying in, i'm staying in myself listen if somebody else is uncomfortable that's okay i'm staying here though i'm staying right up in this box and this is all me and i appreciate what you did there and i think that's that's an incredible distinction that that i'm so happy that you brought up and that's recorded because i think right now chris and we and i've talked about this there's such a um, push to be like everybody else. Like, yo, you got to do this. You got to do that. Like, yo, you you want to you wanna get 10,000 followers? Then guess what? You stand on your left toe and then you turn to the north. And it's like, wait, wait, wait. This is, this is failing to resonate with me. Right. So this, kind of, this brings me to two other pieces, uh, uh, two other principles. I think I, I have an idea of which one you are, but go ahead. Okay, okay. tell me, which one, which one are you thinking? Because I'm saying this one goes hand in hand with there's no privilege without pressure. Oh, that's one of them. That's one of them. That's one of them. Yes. But, and I think that one's important because when you talk about outside your comfort zone, you want the privilege of being this guru. You want the privilege of making this money. You want the privilege of all these things. you got to be willing to deal with the pressure. Yes. And I think that's the, the thing people are missing now is like they want – the 20 million followers or whatever it is they want. They want this, they want that, but that comes with pressure. You got to deliver. You got to right. bring content. You got to bring all these things. And if you're not being your true self, it's going to feel like a strain and a stressor. Yes. When people are like, Chris, you put out all this content. You do this, you do that. 
there's really not that much pressure because that's just source. Like I'm not really marketing to people. I'm just giving you my my truth and then letting you sort and like I'm this food for thought. You do the dishes, right? I love so that. it's like I'm putting this <laughs> yeah. content out and this <laughs> it is what it is, I right? Dig that, dig that, yeah, bro. you dig that one. <laughs> I love that. Yo, whenever you say that, I'm like, yo, I dig that phrase, bro. <laughs> one of my favorites. But like, so again, going back to that, if I want this privilege, I have to deal with yeah. this pressure. Yes. And so if you want to be fake to make the 10 million followers or whatever it is, or you want a certain amount of people buying your content and you want to be fake to do it, now right. how long can you keep that character going? And that's what people run into the problem. When you have people who can do it for 15, 20, 30, 40, 50 years, like, yo, listen, I, I like listening to Tony Robbins. That dude is Tony Robbins. That, that dude thinks this way all the time. Yeah. Like, Love him or hate him, he really does think about this stuff all day long. When you try to be Tony Robbins, that's when I'm like, you look at you like, come on, man, that's corny, man. Like, I've yeah. seen him do it. What do you bring into the table? You know, yes. that's why Eric Thomas was such a breath of fresh air for that whole motivational speaking thing, because he just did it his way. Right. Like, Yo, I'm E.T., the hip-hop preacher. What up, what up, what up, right? Yeah, yelling and, and shit. Thank God it's Monday. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Or like Gary V, right? People try to be Gary V. Now I see people on stage cursing, dropping F bombs and all this stuff. And I'm like, yo, man, you're corny. You can't be Gary V. Like he did it. He did it his way and he made it. And even his content, if you actually listen to it, he's saying, do your thing. Yes. Come up with your weird scheme and just freaking do go after it and stay with it for X amount of time and it's gonna pay off. If yeah, you're a multimillionaire, but you'll be happy. And I think people lose his message. They try to just be him rather than hearing what he's telling you. And then in basically taking that within, right. deciphering it within yourself and then pushing out the product that you want to push out. And that's why I like, again, our men's group is so important because someone like Lamar, you were talking about, he just has his vibe. Like no matter where right. he goes, I've known this dude since college. That's what, that's what you're going to get. Every time you yep. bring him somewhere, this, this is the character you're getting. Cause that's him and that's why you love someone like that or like even yourself right mm. i mean you say you're a people pleaser but you are to an extent you're just a happy dude that wants to show love and spread love and make everyone around you feel good about themselves and so you put that energy out the problem becomes when you're around people who are sucking that energy and not accepting or reciprocating it when you're around mm. the vultures who are pulling that away or vampires are pulling that blood out and saying yeah We'll utilize Paul. He's happy go lucky. Let's toss him in front and make him do all our work for us. Yep. That's where the issue runs in. But when you're around people who just generally feel your energy and enjoy it around, then that's a different situation. Those actually fulfill you or build you mm -hmm. up right? and then pull you down. Yes, yeah, it's, it's uh I, I appreciate what you're saying because that there is an energetic exchange when it's like when someone is there's a give and take rather than a take 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 right you know and i i think that's dude i i think this is this is something that for for those that are listening and are really looking to get to that next level right and really look to stick it out it's gonna be freaking uncomfortable like, Chris, I mean, like, yo, you, there's a couple times in the book, like, when you're talking about, and I remember you telling me this when you first opened Flow Fitness in Westfield. You took out the advance, and you know what? Listen, you, you the, the, the privilege is, hey, I got my own shop. I've always wanted to have it. I know I could do it better. The pressure is, I got to get clients, so I'm not sitting here by myself. Bro, I would sit there for hours, like, and that's why I'm, I'm excited when the audio book comes out. We haven't filmed it yet, but the audio book's going to be different because I'm going to give the full, like, full story of uh, going into these stories I told in the book because nice. I'm better at speaking than I'm writing. So the audio book's going to be way deeper into these conversations. But to that, to that point, when I first opened my business in Westfield, first of all, it was out of necessity. It wasn't because I wanted to be a boss or whatever. Like no one was doing that type of training at the time. Now everyone has a functional training gym and all this stuff. Right. At the time, no one was really, TRX had just come out. Like people right. don't understand that TRX had just hit. Like I was one of the first people to have a TRX. I was one of the first people in the world to have a rip trainer. Like I remember. Rip trainer, bro. Like that's, you know what I mean? Like when you really sit down and think about it, like, yo, that's wild. Like I was the first YouTube video for rip trainer stuff. Yeah. So 
when you start thinking about that, I was starting that stuff at that time. I had no clients, like no one cared about what I was doing. I didn't know marketing and business and all that stuff. I was literally sitting there watching people walk by, like, is anybody going to come in? Like, you know, and I'm not the type of person to walk up and be like, hey, sign up for my gym. Yeah. And when I did, when we did the spring fling in Westfield and I had all these people, these emails and people sign up, I had no, I had no plan to follow up. I was just like, oh, these people want to train with me. What do I do now with all this, right? right? And it was very, very ignorant, very naive on my part. I had a big buzz. A lot of people wanted to train with us. I had no idea what I was doing. And honestly, so to this day, I have no idea what I'm doing. Like, I'm just I'm right following, I'm going with the flow. And I, I've been telling everybody about this. I think her name is Virginia Woolf. They had that quote, I'm rooted, but I flow. And so I'm rooted in who I am. Yet I just flow and, and whatever it, it kind of guides me to or I'm pulled towards, I'll go in that direction. But whatever direction I go into, it's going to be me going in that direction. And so when it comes to business, I just did my version of what a gym looks like. Still right. to this day, I'm not making six figures in a gym. I'm nowhere near that. But I have a lot of fun, <laughs> right? Right. <clears throat> Writing a book, I'm not claiming to be a, a top level author. I want to dominate the, the, the book market. It was just, I was compelled to do this thing. I was pulled in that direction. Who knows mm. what's next, whether it be more public speaking. I don't know, but no matter what industry I fall into or category, I'm going to be myself in that thing. And I think right. that's important, again, for people to understand. Well, you just, and you brought up something. I was going to go into the power of a, <clears throat> the power of a plan. Okay. Before I do that, though, <laughs> you, um, you hit on something which I'm looking, which was principle 10. Direction determines destination. Yes, sir. Like, are my, and one of the, the thing that resonated with me, I took down as my notes, are my actions moving me forward? And I think that that's also in alignment with the power of intention, right? So it's like, if well, I got a, yo, well, listen, it, it, there it is. There it is, man. That's why I'm like, oh, junk. Like I, I found, I found myself when I was like, when I, when I was reading, the last part was like, build your legacy. I was like, okay, I see what you did here. I'm like, I was at, uh, yo, I was wrapping it up, and I was sitting here in my chair, like, I get it. And I'm looking, I'm sitting here, I'm looking at notes, and then, because like even what you just said, right? I think it's so powerful that we that you said that because. A couple of things you said, you, you created the gym out of necessity because your direction was functional, right? Because, bro, I can remember vividly, like, coming down to your, your, to flow when you got the rip trainer. And I was like, yo, what is this thing? That was before, um, that was before Pete put something out, before I saw Pete even do the, Pete Holman even well, do the Pete, video. Yeah. I, I got to correct you on there. Pete had yeah. it. Or it was called something else. It was like Rip 90 or something. It was like black yeah. and it didn't sell. And then Pete got it with TRX. And then when right. Pete got it, I was at the first world show. He was at, I was at Ursa. That's why I was one of the first people to get it because TRX had just launched it. And so Pete wow. was in ah, doing all this stuff and TRX hadn't put branded content on, on YouTube yet. So I was got probably you. the first Rip Trainer video. For those who are in fitness world, you understand what we're saying. Yeah, 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 that's why that, that was, was so crazy. But just real quick oh. before we continue on that point, yeah, when we talk about intuition and intention driving an action, so one of the guys I was in the podcast this morning, he asked me, why did you start with 18 to 1? Right. And I had, I had that idea, and it's because if J, when you listen to Jay-Z's Black album, it's backwards. So the first song is supposed to be the last song and vice versa, right? so I was like oh that's a cool concept and then when I put it to this it, it it makes more sense now because when you start the book it starts at principle 18 and mm -hmm. some of those principles are almost like less personal and then when you get to like three two one those are like really like my like really personal ones so it's yeah, almost like yeah. getting to know me throughout the book and then you get the the like the almost motivation behind the book when you get to principle one you get to my grandfather and so it starts backwards because it's like, you know, here's kind of superficial stuff, movement, you know, this stuff. And then as you get deeper into it, it's like, wow, then you really get to stories of my mom and then my grandfather. And then now it's your turn. And yeah. so 
cool now how looking back on it, but it was very intuitive. I, that's not something I really gave full thought to until I was asked that question. I was like, why did I do that? And I had to ask myself mm. that and reflect. And now I'm like, yeah, it's like, it's like a boxer, right? Like you jab, 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 get to get away. Like you're superficial. Right. Hit you with that hook. Then it's a wrap. Like, then, it's then, like the setup. <laughs> so yeah, it's like you're the like, uh, set up to three, two, one. And again, those are the principles I started with. Like the whole book, the premise of it, I remember like, you know, super vividly at my grandfather's funeral. Like, first of all, I couldn't walk in because it was like a part of me was was done, right? And finally being able to walk in, like my whole family went in and I sat in the lobby and I was just like, I can't, I can't see him like that, right? Yeah. But when I got up and, and, and spoke at that, I talked about those three things he had always said. And it's funny, my cousin, who I'm really close with, he came up to me afterwards and he was like, bro, until you said that, I never realized how often he told us those three things. And I'm not going to spread them now because you got to go in the book and read it. Got to go book and read it. He said those three things over and over. And like on, every time he spoke to him, he'd sit there and say those things. And it was like, and that's why my, uh, why Carter's middle name is Vicente, because that's my grandfather's name. So that's part of building, putting that legacy together. Me wearing a fedora is part of that. Like everyone who knows me knows I wear a fedora constantly. Fedora Fest is my birthday party every year. Fedora represents him. Like he would always wear these things when he would go out. And so I saw my dad do that. And so when I started working in nightclubs and going out, I would wear my fedora because it was like a homage to like, this is my dress code when I go out. Like my family always did it. And so my kids have a ton of fedoras already too. So it's like, <laughs> I love it, man. You know what I mean? Like when people look, if no one, if someone doesn't know me, I feel like there's a, there's always this like, they look at me kind of funny, not like yeah. funny, but it's always like, who's this dude? Like, and Lamar talked about when we first met, like in college, right. like not like me to a point, because it's like, yeah, who's? Oh, I remember him talking about that one night. Yeah, we were this, hanging this, out. Yeah. But it's because I'm so rooted in my family. Like, I don't care. And so, therefore, when you see me walk out, no one's wearing a fedora. And I'm out there with a fedora. People are like, oh, this guy thinks he's hot shit. Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, no, it's not for you. Like, this represents me and my family. So when I put this on, it's like I'm putting my, my, my cape on. Like, this makes me a superhero. Your comfort is zero to my, Like, I don't care. Like, I'll be the only person dancing in a place. I'll be the only person doing something because I don't. I literally can care less what you think. If this brings me joy and this brings me pleasure or the people I'm with have fun with this, this is what we're going to do. And you can be down with it or you cannot, but that's not, I can't sit there and, and, and oh, be friends with me, like me, be cool with me. Da, 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 da. Yo, yeah. I live that way. I, I've, I've experienced what that's like and it's, it's empty. So I need mm. to make sure fill me and the people I'm around. Dude, it's so interesting, man. As you're talking, so it's like it really is the book like like when you just said that it gave me a whole other perspective because it really is like the book is a setup for the for for the last three chapters Mm -hmm. because the last three chapters are freaking potent man and i mean like those are serious life principles man yeah um that your sons will really take in the question i have for you man because i i'm i'm curious like, what are some of the reasons it's so important to you to carry on family legacy and family traditions, family thoughts, words, those things? I have no idea. Gotcha. <laughs> like, uh, to be brutally honest, like, I don't know why this is, and, and I, maybe it's ancestry, maybe it's them speaking through me. Uh, I can tell you there's been times where I'm, like, speaking to an audience. Mm-hmm. And it's literally not me. Like, I have no idea who's talking to this audience. And yeah. People, think that's crazy like it's just like a source is going like I'm just a vessel at that point whether right. it be my grandfather or my great-grandfather like I've always felt his presence my grandfather's presence my dad's presence my dad's still alive so it's like I still yeah. feel that pull my dad had all these ideas and all this stuff my dad always wanted to write a book my dad always wanted to have a business you know he told me at one point um after working for NBC for all these years he always thought like what if I had done for 30 years into my own business, I wonder what would have come. Right. So the words he instilled in me, the words my mom instilled in me, I just felt an obligation that I have to do things for them. Like I have to, this stuff has to come out because it's really them speaking. Like while it's me and, and I can send you the message my mom sent and I sent, I sent it to the group, you, you saw that. 
Yeah, yeah. That was it for me, man. Like the fact that she felt like I, her voice, everything she stood for, yeah. and everything she 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 went through for us is now validated by this book. That's why I can care less of who buys it or not. I hope right. people enjoy it. But her validation, her stamp on it was like, yo, that tore my heart apart. Like, mm. you know, that was just like, yo, this is it. Like, yeah, so man. I, I didn't even know why I wanted to do this book, to be honest, which I never want to be fully an author. Like, all this time, I don't know why I want to do this book. Like, these things came to me and I, and I was just acting upon them. But it was probably like something within her that was like, I need you to be my voice because I'm not the one to talk. My mom's not going to save me. She's not going to stand up for herself. She's not going to do this stuff. So it was like, you know, I think every generation's obligation is to, to take a step up. You know, they talk about generational wealth. It's not just financial. It's in all aspects of wealth. It's in spiritual, right. it's in everything. Yep. And so I feel like she instilled in so much in me and she won't tell anybody. Like she won't say any of this stuff. Like you get my mom on a podcast, she ain't talking. Yeah. She's not yeah. that person. So she got a, a good shit talking son. And so now I'm going to go out there and be like, listen, <laughs> like I'm going to say it now. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. And there's so much to that. Like I'll bring, we talk a little bit about in the book about the South Bronx, like growing up in the hood. It was like, yo, you, you don't talk about it, be about it. Yeah. So can't sit there and yep. say, I want to do, I want to represent my mom, my family and all this stuff and not be about it. So yeah. part of the book is like, yo, I'm, I'm being about it. Like, I wanted this to happen, so here it is. Right. Dude, I got to tell you, man. Uh, as you're speaking, man, I, 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 I so, um, man. So what's coming up for me right now is I'm thinking about your granddad. Mm. And I'm thinking about that time I came over your house when Carter was first born. And I brought a card. Yes, yes. And a write-up. Yeah. yeah, and I remember your mom's reaction. And your the the grandfather you're talking about was actually your mom's dad. No, it's my dad's dad. It was your dad's dad. Yeah. Okay. So she was close with him, and and oh, that's what it was. Okay. Yeah. yeah. You know, up there. So we go back, and this is like something I may tell me not. Whatever, I'll tell you guys. Um. So my my dad's mom, so my grandmother on my dad's side, didn't accept my mom when they first got together. So she didn't show up to the wedding, but my grandfather showed up to the wedding. He always loved my mom. Like we go to Puerto Rico, my grandfather was like all about my mom, like red carpet for my mom. He loved her, but my dad's mom never vibed with her. Gotcha. And so the whole life, it was like this whole thing. And I don't talk about this in the book, but my mom's mom and my dad's mom never met. Until one day I had to pick up my dad's mom in the Bronx. And I was like, yo, she, she came home from Puerto Rico. I was supposed to bring her to Jersey to, to stay with my parents. I drove her to my other grandma's house. And I remember, in, the, yo, I remember yeah, you telling yeah. me about this. Bro, we're in the middle of South Bronx under the six train, like just chilling there. And I was like, yo, here, y'all meet. And that was the first time they ever spoke and met in person. And they had to be in their early like, 80s. Like the first wow. time they ever had a conversation. And they were best friends. Like after that moment, I was like, yeah, she's great. Like, yo, know, all these years, you guys had this resentment and this bullshit that you guys, you know, whatever your reasons being, like two stubborn fucking mules. Right. Put you and now you're best friends and, and buddy, buddy. And so like these different things, like, and why, and here's a question for myself. Why the hell did I do that? I have no idea. I Dude. still say, don't know what made me be like, yeah, you guys should meet. Like, zero concept of who that was who made that happen but for my family that was a. Uh, if i did that and nothing else in my life my parents would be like you helped our family well <sighs> yeah you know what you have mentioned source i would say i would i would say um i would say close to 10 times maybe more yeah and and you also even said, like, you know, maybe they come through me. And, like, what's coming up for me is, like, you are that conduit, man. You are that vessel. Because, like, now looking at this. That's not right. <laughs> it makes so much. It's like, yo, listen. So, because, like, yo, it's building legacy 
And also, Chris, like what I'm feeling is like, yo, this is like connecting to source. Because what I and, and what I'm what I'm seeing, what I'm hearing here is like, and, and, and why I'm saying this for, for the listeners and viewers here is that part of us really stepping into something galactic is for us to let go and settle into that source. And the source is the forces unseen. Like, you know, before I do my podcast, you know, I do something to call in those energies because I think that's real. And right. Chris, what you've done, especially like, you know, hearing this and like being on this podcast, it's like, comes to me, it's like, shoot, man, they do speak through you. And the reason they speak through you is because of these, these principles that you laid out here. I think that, you know, knowing you for, for as long as I have, man, it's like, I've seen your development and your maturation. And I've seen like, in reading the book, like, you know, I can relate, I can't like, I'm like, oh, junk, okay, yeah. All right, oh, junk, yeah. I remember that. And some of these things I'm like, oh, that's new. Right. And I and I think that over the years, um, especially up until Carter was born, like you've been refining your vessel. Right. And I think this is part, and, and for those that are like that are getting this book, really like keep this book. All right. If you're gonna share this book, go buy it for somebody else. Um, give it for a stocking stuffer, give it for a gift, give it for a birthday, give it to a man in your life, give it to a person that's confused, give it to a person that's stuck, give it to a person that's freaking unstuck, give it to a person that's thriving. Mm. Because what I'm what what this is, especially when you get to the last three, it's it's guidelines. Like I see this as more as more than a book. I see this as a guide mm. to really connecting to building that legacy. And the legacy, man, like. The legacy is like, I've always thought of it as like carrying on and carrying on the traditions and, and, and tweaking them every generation. Yeah. Cause now it's like you, and you said in the beginning, right? Chris, it's like, look, when Carter and Logan, uh, th those are the names of Chris's son. They, when they read this, they're gonna be like, oh, John, yo, dad, you did that? Yo, listen, dad would do it like this. Mm -hmm. But like, yo, dad, yo, yo, I'm gonna give you wrong directions to mess with your ass. Like, you know what? I should have put that in there. <laughs> but yo, but like, I think this is, this is the juice of this, man. And I think this is powerful because, you know, you go over, you go over many things in this. And I, I appreciate the fact that you allow people to take their own path within the book which yeah. in itself is starting to get people to build their own legacy yes yeah you know it's it's brilliant man it's brilliant and uh so oh man so so much is coming up from me right now so i'm like oh breathing yeah. breathing we already hour in yo serious man i'm like golly so listen, I, I want, cause a couple more things before we start wrapping up, man. Yeah. Um, because one of the things, and it was like, and it was one of the, it was one of the beginning ones in the book. It was a power of saying no, right? And I forget, like, again, these are my yeah, notes. So, uh, yeah, no, that was principle, seven, principle 17. It, it's yeah, it's be a man of your word. And let you, yes mean yes and no mean no. Yes. Yeah. And when I first saw the title, I was like, oh man, integrity. Yes. And really the thing I got out of it was the power of no. Yeah. No is a complete sentence, man. It's a complete sentence. Yeah. And I think that like, while that's one of the first principles in the book, I think that that's super important in building the legacy because you even said it, man, if something was out of alignment, it didn't flow, right? And you even mentioned, uh, and what I appreciated was like, you know, yes, yes, yes. And I think that's something, me personally, I, I, I think that it, from an entrepreneurial and like that creative side and also being a go-getter, yes. Uh, wh what you got, I got it. Yeah. Like I, that's when I was reading it, I actually, like I, I, I had to pause at that chapter, man, because like I, I reflected on all the times 
I've said yes. Like, okay. Like, hey, Paul, you do this? Okay. Yeah, sure. Hey, Paul, can you do this? Uh, yeah, yeah, I can do that. And I failed to, well, hold up. You know what? Tell me more about this. Yeah. You know yeah. what? After hearing it, uh, that's not my thing. Thank you. No. Yeah, part of that too, and, and you can't beat yourself up at this point because part of that is your journey, right? That's obviously right. Great. But part of it is where we came from. Like as, as a minority mm. in the country, you feel like you have to be better than everyone else to make it. Like right. part of me saying yes to all these things was like, I almost felt guilty saying no because there's so many Puerto Ricans in the Bronx and the kids I grew up with who don't have these opportunities. So I felt like every yeah, time I was given the opportunity, like, hey, come do this. I'm like, yeah, I'll do it. Like, all my boys in the hood don't have that option. So I'm going to do everything I can to make them proud and do all these things. And so I can go back and be like, yo, my dude, I made it. Like, look, look, look. Yeah, look and, what I did. Yeah. Right? Look all these things I'm doing. And it's like, you, you get this hustler mentality. And then when you get to a certain level in life, you're like, yo, these people don't even work that hard. Like all these people I'm interacting with, it's generational wealth. Your great grandparents gave you seven properties and now you've already, you started life at $5 million of of net worth. So everything you do is kind of irrelevant. Like, yeah, it's great to you. You're going to find purpose or whatever else, but like you could fall back on this money at any point. Like you're not, there's no safety net for me and my family. Like there was no, like when my dad started doing what he did, there's no safety net. Like you fall through, it's it, it's over. Mm-hmm. Like we have zero to fall back on. Like we didn't have a generational wealth or a generational, you know, trust fund or whatever it may be. Right. You start finding out that some of these families and people who are doing well, it's like, yeah, well, yeah, my parents, like, I don't know if you've ever listened to the podcast, How I Built This. And I love that podcast with Guy Raz. But one huh. thing that I've noticed that's a co- reoccurring theme a lot of times is some of these people, it's like, yeah, well, you know, my my dad gave me eighty thousand to start the business. What? Hmm. Eighty? Like, if I asked my my, my dad for four thousand, it'd be like, <gasps> like, yeah, you're like, yeah, what do you need it for? Yo, yeah. eighty grand, and not eighty grand now. Eighty grand in the eighties. Yo, how much money these people had saved up? Like you. So it really, I love that podcast because it breaks down like how these people really made it, and some of them. If your dad had 80,000 to give you back in the 80s and 70s or whatever, that means you were doing really well. And so we can't compare ourselves. That's why comparison is, is like, it robs you of joy, right? Because you yeah, sit there and you're like, how come I don't have what they have? Well, they had a 20 year head start. So you're doing <laughs> phenomenal for what you had. So for me, I always got to check myself and like, yo, I graduated college. That's huge for my family. And in fact, right. I just graduated college. I don't have my master's, but I graduated college. So now my sons, their expectation would be at least the very bare minimum you have to graduate college. Mm. I mean, and like, so now the expectation keeps rising. And then like, you know, if, if we have life insurance policies, like how many people with COVID, it was crazy. How many friends are putting up like, yo, my dude, like he just, yo, he died. Wow, his mom died. They'll donate, donate, go fund me. I'm like, yo, you, none of you had life insurance policy. Life is, bro, man. Yo. Policies, right? Like, and that's something I've had life insurance since I was in my early 20s. So now it's like, if God forbid anything happens, that's part of a legacy. Like, when I do workshops on this, that's some of the things we're going to talk about is like not leaving your family behind. Like, if I die, my kids will at least be able to cover my funeral and certain yeah. expenses because I have life insurance policies on me. So it's like these little things, people on the other side of of the tracks don't even know exist. So when you talk about Black Lives Matter, you talk about all these movements, right? It's like on the grand scheme, that's great. We can have these conversations, but they need the small help. Like they need that, yo, here's the truth, bro. Like here's how you can build a legacy. Start with your family's values and principles because- Getting locked up at 16 shouldn't be like, yeah, you know, that's the norm. That's the first, you know what I mean? Like, that's the bare minimum. Like, those principles have to change. And then from there, you can start building something. But understand, that's why it's so important that you build your legacy, is that you're building it. Like, you're putting those little bricks and white bricks on the front, for those who haven't seen it. You're putting your bricks so that it gets bigger over time. Not to say you're going to master it in your lifetime. 
And that's right. an important key people need to realize you're, you're laying foundation for future generations of your family to do better. And it doesn't mean that kids, it could be cousins. You could be the yep. uncle that lays it down for your family. You could be the really close friend. You could be the teacher. You could be the mentor. But you're putting these things down so that other people's lives can be better. And that's why one of the chapters is give without expectation to receive. Mm -hmm. you give to these people and you may not be around to see it reciprocated. It may happen five generations down or two generations down. You never know. But it's important that you give what you have to give. Not all of it. Mm -hmm. Give what you're capable of giving now. So that those that come after you can do better. Mm. Chris, you uh oh man, that was that was powerful, man. Thank you. And as you were speaking, I, I recognized something too. It's like the legacy can go both ways. So especially when you're talking about like from the minority population, like that what you just what you said before resonated with me. It's like an eternal oppression piece, like. I got to do, like, I remember growing up, my, my, my Jamaican household, it's like, look, you got to be twice as good as them. You got to look twice as good as them. Especially in the neighborhood you were in, bro. Like, what? You know, think about, and, and, and this is something, like, and I'll put this out here on this podcast. I know it's your podcast, but I'll call you out on this. It, it's one of those things where, like, yo, you are a magical person. Like, you've done so much in your life that, other people would aspire and dream to do and yet you still sometimes have this sense of like i gotta do more and yeah. it's like yo you don't know how phenomenal of a human being you are just in what you've done already mm, so you, with this podcast and all this stuff it's like yeah that's great continue to do streams and all that stuff it's it's amazing but if you hold yourself to their standards whoever they may be you're never going to measure up Right. But you look at it from your, you know, there's someone else, there's some kid in who knows where right now may listen to this podcast and may I dream of being like Paul. Yeah. And Paul doesn't even want to be Paul sometimes. So that <laughs> kind of have to check yourself like, yo, yep. you know, like I'm doing some amazing things and pat yourself on the back. That's why I had this bourbon tonight. Like, yo, I'm, I'm <laughs> celebrating, man. I'm in celebration mode right now. Like when you ask oh. me, before we log down, you're like, how you doing? I'm blessed, man. Like, <laughs> yes, my, my boy's upstairs sleeping. Favorite, baby. Yo, my boy's upstairs sleeping. That the house, we're all safe. We're all healthy. You know, there's money in the bank. Not a lot, but there's enough to, to pay the mortgage. And a book just came out and it sold 100 copies, which some people may think it's minimal. For me, I, I want to celebrate that because yeah. I didn't know how many it would sell. So we sold 100 already. I'm like, yo, life is good, man. <laughs> Yo, you just released it last week, man. Yo, bro. Who in person? <laughs> yo, yo, shoot, man. Listen. Oh man, you're hitting, you're hitting it, man. Um, because I gotta tell you, you know what? I had I had some moments a, a couple weeks ago, man. Um, where I was like, yo, like I was living by someone else's standards, and it's painful, man. And the one thing that really broke it broke broke me out of it was. And it was an alignment with privilege and pressure is I, I remember I was sitting in my sun porch and I just started crying and I was giving thanks for all the things I was going through because it's like, it's exactly what I asked for. I asked for growth and here it is. Mm. Like I'm growing from this man. And, you know, I'm in my, in my forties, I'm finally figuring out like what I do. You know what I mean? Like, finally, finally, God, God, thank God. Yeah, and, and that's why, yo, know, financial success is not the thing. Like, right. yo, know, to be blunt, like, at the time when I left the job, yeah, I was at, like, one, close to 140 a year, 140,000 a year, which is not crazy, but for a single person, it's a lot of money for one dude to be making chasing my tail and thinking I always had this this image in my head like if I made a hundred thousand I would be living the dream and here I was making 140 fucking miserable like chasing my tail running in all different directions and it was like wait something's not right right you told me the society told me that that number was the number to hit and you would do well now I'm way below that number and I'm actually super happy in finding self and I'm glad I recognized it when I did, because if I acquire too much, right. and that's why in the book we talk a little bit about like getting things when, when you're ready to receive it. 
if I had notoriety and, and success and all this, whatever, at that moment, yeah. talking to big audiences, I wouldn't be ready to receive the content or receive the, the, the love or whatever else. That's right. Now I feel I'm at the point where I have, I know my social responsibility, where if I talk and one of my goals, and I'm going to toss this out to the universe, one of my goals is to speak at Madison Square Garden to sell Ooh. a talk, right? We're talking the garden floor, not the theater. Okay, we're talking the garden. Square garden, sit there and and just talk to people, right? I just want to make sure the ancestors heard that. Yeah, and clear, clear. yep. So that's one of my goals in life. And I feel like a a platform that huge and that magnitude, I would understand the social responsibility of versus people who make it and they say reckless stuff and they have this huge audience they garnish. And now it's like, no, nah, I didn't really mean that. And it's like, yo, right. you said it all. Right. And I, that's why I think some people get success or get fame way too early. Right. You're not ready because you don't even know who you are. And that's why you watch artists like Nicole was talking the other day. She's like, she's not a big Taylor Swift fan, but she's like, this mm-hmm. last album was heat. She was like, yo, Taylor Swift's album was dope. Right. And it's like, you never liked her, but now she's becoming a woman and she's expressing real woman talk. So real woman's going to recognize it now. That Word early up. pop stuff was was kid stuff. Yep. But it got her this large audience, right? And now she's understanding that, wow, I'm a woman now. I have a, a social responsibility for my followers yep. to be real and be true. And mm-hmm. so, you, you know, you see a lot of artists now switch from that poppy da-da-da to like, you know, they spit in that real. Like even Hove with the 444 album. That was a... Yup. Yep. That was, that was, that was that raw, bro. That was straight heat. Every, every song on that meant something, you know what I mean? And, Bro, bro, dude, man. So, oh man, so much, so much, Paul. But hold up, man. Before, before we go any further, we gonna we gonna wrap it up. Um, because the last chapter of the book, for those who read it, is to then your turn to build your legacy. What we're gonna do is flip this podcast to Paul. Oh, and I'm gonna ask you questions, and we're gonna start building your principles. And whether you keep them or not is really up to you. Um, I'm so happy I have a pen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the, the premise of this now is, again, end of the book is that you build your own legacy. Like you start yes. writing out your own principles that matter. End goal at some point is I want to create my own card game where people can have like a build your legacy card game and ask I each other questions that. like we do it on our fire pits at my house. Oh, I love, um, yo, for, uh, can I say, listen, I'm game. And like, listen, anybody that hangs out with Chris, you know, like something like this bound to happen. Chris would be like, yo, okay, everybody, let's get in the seats. Let's get a circle. Let's get in a circle. <laughs> yo, we're going to play a game. Yo, I'm in. Let's do this. Yeah, so so we're going to do here for, for the listeners, we're going to have Paul build his own legacy here and write down his principles that matter to him. And so I want you guys to do at home, if you're listening to this, grab a pen, grab a piece of paper. We'll, we'll give you a moment to get that settled. And we're just going to ask a series of questions, and we'll let Paul answer the question. Um, and don't think too much. It's important that you don't right. overthink these questions. Like whatever. No, I'm not gonna write it then. I'm just saying. No, no, write answer. it. Write it. But what comes to your head, like, don't think for 20 minutes. Like, ah, but I want to say this. Like, you know, um, the first thing that that hits your heart is the thing you should be, you know, the most likely to uh, to write down. Man, I'm a little butt puckered with this, man. I'm like, oh <laughs> shit. Like, what, what's what, what 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 what's about to happen? <laughs> so, all right. So here's here's and this is the questions I asked my family that helped us write these principles. So that's why it's important. All right. So what's what's a phrase your mom slash or dad used to always say? It's not what you make; it's what you do with what you make. Boom. That's one of your principles. Mm-hmm. And that's why I want people to understand. It's that simple. Like these are how you write your principles. The first thing that comes to their head. That's the, what your family stands for. Yeah. So that's important for you, especially because you were talking about the money thing. It's not what you make. Right? So that's a yep. family principle right there. You've been living it. You didn't realize it. For real, bro. <laughs> God, God. <laughs> All right. <laughs> second one. Second question. Uh, what's a story about your mom slash or dad that has always stood out? And then why did that story, what did that story mean to you? Oh, hands down. It was, it was my dad. It was my 21st birthday. And um, he took me for a drink at this at the office in Summit. And he always had this phrase, he's like, by the way, today's your birthday, right? Yeah. So I was like, yeah, dad. So he took me for a drink in the bar and he ordered me a brandy and tonic. And I thought this drink was disgusting. Even the bartender was like, this is disgusting. 
So like I'm sitting with my dad at the bar. I got my friends behind me. They have shots lined up. So I figured this drink is nasty. I'm going to drink it fast. Right, Chris? So I drink it fast. I'm like, dad, man, thanks. That was nasty. That was, that was a horrible drink. He was like, you drank it too fast. Bartender, get him another one. And I was like, are you freaking kidding me? He was like, take your time. Mm. Take your time. And I was like, oh, and that's always stuck with me, man. Anytime I start to move too fast, I think about the taste of that brandy and tonic. Ooh. And, and yo, and you know what's wild, man? Like when the second one, we were chilling, bro. We were chilling. <laughs> and then he left, he pooped, and then I had these shots, and I was sick as a mug that night. But, uh, yeah, that wow. sticks out the most, man. Bro, that's fire. Take your time. That's a great principle, man. Thank you, bro. Yeah, I'm, yo, yeah, yeah. <laughs> See, this, this build your legacy thing is a lot easier than people think. Uh, next <laughs> one's, um, what's something your grandparents always said? It could be on any side or, if, you know, or you heard a story about them, they used, something they used to say. Hmm. So it's interesting. I I knew one grandparent, my uh my grandma Dulcie. And um and yeah, she was like she was different, man. She was cool. Um but you know what? Like the one that really resonates is is my my grandfather James. Mass James, they called them. Like mm. in, in Jamaica, it was like Mass Herbert. Mass was like Master, Mister. So Mass James, they called him. And uh, he was an educator. And I just remember like he would learn different languages. He was well-traveled. And I just remembered, I mean, like, listen, that dude, he got around. Um, but <laughs> he got around. I mean, like, I think there's newels in every fucking continent. Um, but um I just remember like, you know, people talking about him being kind, him being intelligent and him being worldly. Like he would know, he knew his various languages. Like he taught in like Cuba. That's where my dad was born in Cuba. So my dad, my granddad had an extramarital affair. Dad happened and she shipped my dad off to Jamaica, a whole other thing. But like, that was, that was what I remember about my grandfather. And, um, he had a he had an air about him. All the pictures I saw, like it was like he had a glow. He was just different. And he, you know, what's funny? He wore a lot of fedoras too. He was a yo. Anytime though, Chris, I show you pictures. He was his junk was tight, constantly, bro, tight. Um, so that's what I would think of him. He was worldly. He was cultured. He was intelligent. Um, and he was fresh and fly, bro. Bro, like, yeah, I'm telling you, man, you're embodying this stuff without even knowing it. Yo, dude, I can't <laughs> wait to listen to this again. I'll be like, yo. yo. Think about you being the chameleon and being able to conversate with all these people. That's a manifestation of that, right? Like your ability to mm. jump in any room and be like, no, nah, I can talk that talk. You want to talk that spiritual talk? We can talk about masculine, feminine energies and, and ancestry. And we could talk about celestial things and, and what's your sign. Or we could talk that, yo, my, your motherfucker gonna stomp this dude out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yo, listen. You got that, that, uh, you know, whatever they call it. You can go wherever on, on that spectrum. Like, you can control that entire spectrum. And you can live in every single one of those parts of the spectrum. Which mm -hmm. is very rare for a lot of people. Because a lot of people can't cross over. Yeah. Um, man, that's important, man. Uh, wow. One, what's a characteristic of yourself that you'd like to pass down to your children? Ooh. Wow. Uh, yeah, so like the first thing that comes up, and I think they got, I think my boys got it to really be able to see people. Mm. To really see people, like beyond the bullshit, like mm, something's incongruent. Mm. Mm. I know Elijah got it, and I know Noah got it, because like Elijah's like, he can. Like he's shy at first, and then once he gets you, he's like, "Yo, it's just the rap." And then Noah's like, he'll chop it up with you, and then find out who you are, and then he's like, "All right, I'm gonna see you." He's like, "Pion pion." So that's the big thing, like really be able to see people because what people portray isn't always what they are. Mm, facts. Yeah. The next one, which is probably just as as easy and difficult, 
what's the characteristic about you you don't want to pass down you hope they don't inherit Ooh, shucks uh oh my god um <laughs> you know what um my focus my procrastination i'll say cuz i can procrastinate on things because i can think like oh i'll be able to handle it just step into it and handle it so my thing that i'm working on is planning better right so i want my boys to really be planners um and and, and be free of the procrastination uh, because i think when they do that like even more of themselves is going to come out and pop and they're going to be more on target more on pace cuz i think that's that's set me back a lot in years like i failed to plan and have a plan you know so it was like i was just like whatever came up i'll be in it rather than being like all right no and i said that's what led me to a lot of yeses because i had no plan i was like okay well, oh what, what, are we going here okay okay yeah you right. know so i that's that's the piece i i want them to stay away from mm, nice and I, got, I got a lot more but i'll just stay with this one that's the end to wrap it up um what's a great piece of advice someone's given you that always stuck with you be oh yeah. man um yo I, I i the the one that's coming up for me um is from a man joe that i worked with at Cintas back in the day and i remember i had a big sale and he was like hey man paul congrats one thing don't take your highs too high and don't take your lows too low mm. keep grinding and i remember i was like what the fuck are you talking about? And I remember, like, I took my high too high because I was like, yeah, I got this big sale. I just started, like, two months ago. What? And then it was just, like, ever since then, it was like, because I failed to do the work. I got caught. I got my head. I was, like, oh, feeling the praise. And when he said that, I was like, okay, yo, I'm feeling you. I'm feeling what you're saying, man. Mm -hmm. Hold on. Let me take this earbud, the earbuds off. Me? Can you hear me? Yep, gotcha. All right, cool. Yeah, because my thing was dying. But yeah, that was that would be it, man. Um, yeah. yeah. Best piece, man. Yo, that was fun, man. I when's the game coming out? <laughs> when's the game coming out? Because, like, yo, you know, I know, I know, and I know what you're gonna do, Chris. I know what you're gonna do. You're gonna have people over, like, yo, come over for the fire pit, we're gonna chill, and then bam, you're gonna be like, yo, guys, guess what? I've been working on. I got this, <laughs> I got, I got these. Build your legacy cards, baby. Who you with? Mm. Dude. No, nah, you know, it was it was Luisa's idea. We were talking the other day. She's like, I see, like, selling the kit. Because, like, you know, you read the book. That's right. It's my turn. And sometimes people need that push. Yeah. Right? Like, here's what you need to, the questions you need to ask these people if you want to develop your legacy or whatever. So yeah. she was like, you come up with a kit where it's like, here's the questions you ask. And so I wrote down, started writing down questions. So I have about, like, 15 now. Um, just writing down questions that like all right during these conversations what kept coming up were the questions I was asking and so that would be the the premise to having a your own like little game where it's again people can sit around and have real conversations but some people need they just need a guide and yeah. I think that's something that me and you are both really well versed at whether we want to give ourselves credit or not like when we're in a room full of people we can guide a conversation and mm. ask these types of questions and keep people engaged and and people leave our space or leave our energy and like damn that was a lot of fun i want to go back there it wasn't yeah. us it was just the questions we asked that made them be themselves yeah and they felt comfortable in that space and i you know i talk about in the book with my mom making sure everyone was comfortable she's that anchor she would do things behind the scenes that you didn't know she did you know you guys come over yo there's certain beers in the fridge like that's because you guys like to drink them so right. I'm like, oh, I know such and such is coming. Let me make sure when I go to the, the, the thing, I'm buying bourbon. I'm not drinking that whole thing. It's like, you know, when the fellas come by, I want them to try a new bourbon. Mm. And that creates the atmosphere that then creates the conversations that then creates the legacy, right? Word, so all that stuff comes around. And so, like, I think, again, we do it intuitively, but other people need that push. So the game would be a thing where, like, people can go, oh, cool, man. Like, these are the kind of questions we can ask. And then that creates their conversation and hopefully helps them build whatever they want to build from there. Bless up, man. And the other You're thing I want to do is because, so this is something I wrote down. I wrote down on the card right here, is that um, 
instead of like the cards, it's gonna be like bricks. So it'll look like the, you know what I mean? <laughs> I think that'd be dope. That'd be a dope See, concept. Yo, bro, you always thinking. I dig it. I dig it. Yo, that's that. You know what, too, Chris? Uh, you know what it is, man. That's that Virgo goodness. Cause we bring a spice to life, bro. We bring that like <laughs> zinga zang. That's what we do, baby. Zingas. Yo, listen. This has been. Chris, I, I, I like, you know, I know we went way over and I think we may have to put two parts in this. I don't know. Right. Um, before we wrap up though, man, cause you, we, yo, you, you dropped a lot of gems in the book. For, listen, people get the book, get the book. Chris, um, I got one last question but before I ask the, ask the question, can you provide the handles? Like how can people get in contact with you? I know the book is on Amazon, build your legacy. Uh, by Chris Flores. Any, uh, what are the handles so they can follow you on social media? Yeah, honestly, man, most people, it's either Facebook, or Instagram. I mean, uh, let's just be real. So with Instagram, it's FLO underscore fitness. And then in my bio, I have the link to the book. So I mean, you can get it in multiple things. Um, the same handle on Twitter, FLO underscore fitness on Twitter. And then on uh, Facebook, just Chris Flo, just look me up, FLO. Um, and you can follow me there and I'm just dropping links and stuff on those. So that's mostly where we're going this year. We did things backwards. And again, it just happens that way. Like I don't have a full website where all this stuff is living in and it's thriving in the website. We're going to develop that over the next year or so. Cool. And that's part of having Luis as part of the team to then like, I need help. I can't do this myself. I can create all day. Like mm-hmm. you put me down in the room, I'll create 20 of these books tomorrow. Like, that's my source. That's my ability, but I cannot do the Instagram, the, 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 the like all that other stuff is I can try and do it, but it's not going to come out right. So I need to find a team, but Bless FLO up. underscore fitness on Twitter, on Instagram, and then look up Chris flow on uh, Facebook. Blessings, man. Now for my guests, what are we, as we close things out, I know. we And again, I know we went over a lot of stuff. Yeah. And is there anything before we wrap up, man, is there anything that you want to relate to the people? Like it could be something we discussed or it could be something that's completely different than anything we talked about. What's yeah, man. That you um, want to leave for them? Yeah, an underlying theme that's not really, um, that's in the book, but it's not really like projected for me. And the reason for writing it was give people the flowers while I can still smell them. And mm-hmm. So there's a lot of mentors mentioned in the book and people who guided me in my life who made me the person I am. And I feel we don't honor those people enough until it's too late, mm. especially with COVID and the things we're dealing with now. It's more important now than ever to show people love while they're still around because you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. So the people who, who helped you, the people who guided you, the people who mentored you, all those people like, yo, show them love because too often we take them for granted and they help us get to these platforms and then we just walk away from them as if they weren't the ones that elevated us. And so for me, I'm so confident in what I do and so comfortable because I'm standing on the shoulders of giants. Mm. Like Mike Fitch, who helped me, Perry, Denise had mentioned the book, Sandy, like my mom, my dad, like all those people made me the person I am. And so my trajectory forward is paying homage to them. And so I'm living up to them. I'm trying to live up to their expectations of me, even though I'm on my own path. But you got to show them love. Like, yo, thank you so much. I appreciate it. You could be writing a note. It could be sending a gift. It could be just calling them once in the blue to see how they're doing. Like too many people take their mentors for granted and they start living like, yeah, it was all me. You know, I'm that. And they think they're swag and they think they're something they're not. And it's like, yo, you've gotten so far away from what got you to this point. Right. And yes, you grow and you become your own man, female, kid, whatever. You become your own person. Right. But never forget those people because those are the people when, when shit hits the fan and you need help they and got you need you. that, they're going to be there for you. And if you weren't there for them, because they may need your help as well, right? I think we take mentors for granted as if they don't need us. They mentored us so they got everything figured out. Now, sometimes your mentors actually need you just as much as you needed them. Mm. And so I've always made it a point to always reach out to show love to those people. And this book is for them and some of the flowers. I had a phenomenal conversation with Denise yesterday. She finished a book. I had a wonderful inspirational conversation with Sandy, who I talk to on a regular basis, but mm. um, two days ago about the book. 
And so these people, again, are still in my life and still helping me, still guiding me. And this, this is the flowers for them. So I hope they're proud. Blessings, man. I, look, man, I, I, I'm going to speak for them. I know they're proud of you, bro. I, I'm proud of you, man. Um, when I saw you put that book out, I was like, this is what's up, man, because I've seen the work that you put in. I see the work that you do on the back end. I see your persistence, man. Like, yo, when you were even talking about you learning the tuck balance, man, I was like, yo, yeah. bro. You would come in the mornings when we were working on it. Remember yep. that? You come yep. to our house and put those numb nuts. I didn't want to say their name in it, but yeah. they're mentioned in the book uh, as a bad decision I made, and mistakes, but whatever, you learn from your mistakes, right? But yeah, you were coming in the bro house in the mornings and, and working on handstands with me. And it was yep. a long process, man. What? And now, bro, I see you uh, handstand, you're breathing, you're doing practice, you're showing people how to do it. Your legs are going out this way, back and forth, like you're running in the air. I'm like, this guy. I'm like, oh, snap. But listen, like, I and 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 I and, and like to wrap on this, this is legacy, right? What we do leaves marks what we do has impact on others man and i'm i'm grateful i know you and i i've met i've come across you and we've connected in this lifetime because i feel like you i think and feel and know and think that you've added value to my life you know as a friend as a brother as a guide brother man like i see you and I'm so happy we got to do this podcast. I'm so excited for your book, man. Thank and you. for other people to read this because, listen, I think if everyone were to read this and, and start to build their legacy, the world would change and shift, man. And how we engage with each other would change and shift. So party peoples, Chris, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. And I'll, in, case I, in case the people in the back didn't hear it, Thank you. Uh, listen, and thank you to the listeners, to the viewers that are watching this. I appreciate you. Thank you for being on this ride with me. Thank you for listening. Thank you for integrating this wisdom that these men are bringing to you. Mm. This is Paul Newell from Men Talk About. Bro, before you go, Paul, man, let these people know, man, if you enjoy this content, you yeah. you show your support by, by giving some money, man. Unfortunately, oh. Currency is king, and, and I pay 99 cents a month just so I can hear Paul. It's not a lot of money. And I wish I'd give more, but I, I, I'm subscribed to this anchor thing, you know, and supporting Paul's podcast. And if you want someone to continue going, that's giving them the flowers while they can still smell them. Support them while they're still here doing this thing. So make sure you go out there and support this podcast. Thank you, brother. Yeah, listen, hook it up because it helps tremendously. Chris, I appreciate that, man. Thank you. Yeah, support the podcast, share donate all this stuff makes a huge difference and and listen i love what i do right free of trying to expect anything back and that junk would be a nice kicker <laughs> nice kicker i yeah. uh, appreciate you chris thank you thank you thank you everybody listening thank you tune in for the next time and listen i know there's some gems in this so you're gonna want to play it again mm -hmm. facts. Peace to everybody. <laughs> facts man peace everybody